everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. Today we're going to be unboxing Eldritch Horror. Not the base game, but one of the expansions. And this one is a big box expansion for Eldritch Horror, which is a fantastic solo game. So if you haven't heard about it at this point already, because it's been out for quite some time, at least the base game and many of the expansions, and it is still going strong, uh, I highly recommend this one. And this particular expansion is called Under the Pyramids. Again, this comes from the Arkham Horror Files collection from Fantasy Fight Games. Games. Now, there is a number of different Eldritch Horror games and expansions as I mentioned. I have the base game currently. I also have uh, Forsaken Lore, which is the first small box expansion added in. Uh, I also have Mountains of Madness, and now I'm going to be adding Under the Pyramids. Now, Strange Remnants is one of the small box expansions that I'm still hunting down. Uh, it's out of print at the moment, or at least I've been waiting for it to uh, ship to my local store so I can pick it up. Uh, but for now, I decided to jump right from Mountains of Madness to uh, the Pyramids. So I'm really excited to open this up because our game group, or my game group that I run on Mondays, is going to be playing Eldritch Horror, and we want to add some new ancient ones into the mix, as well as adding in some more content. So hopefully this unboxing will give you an idea as to what you can expect inside this expansion. So let's go ahead and flip this expansion over so you can see exactly what it looks like on the opposite side. So uh, again, it might be tough to see uh, necessarily exactly what's going on in the back here, but I'll zoom in as best I can here. So you can see it says uh, Eldritch Horror under the Pyramids expansion. The Dark Pharaoh rises. So long ago, the Pharaoh uh, Nefrika uh, governed uh, Nefren. Ka, yeah, there we go. Governed Egypt with such malice and cruelty that his own people eradicated all evidence of his reign. Now the Brotherhood of the Beast has uncovered the truth and conspired to return the Dark Pharaoh to the throne, dooming Egypt and all of humanity to an age of wretched slavery. You and your fellow investigators must make haste to Egypt and brave its most secret and haunted places to put a stop to the cultists and ensure the Nephrin Cat remains forever in his torpid slumber. The Under the Pyramids expansion features an Egypt sideboard, which is what you're seeing here down in the pocket of the area on the screen that you actually can't see. This is the sideboard that gets included in the game. It enables investigators to explore the nation's bustling cities, barren deserts, and mysterious archaeological sites. Eight intrepid new in investigators are going to join the struggle against the Ancient Ones, aided by invaluable relics, powerful glamour spells. That sounds new, glamour spells. I'm not sure if I've seen those before. And legendary allies, including the archaeologist Enoch Bowen and the illusionist... Uh, Erech Wes, unprecedented wonders and horrors await you under the pyramids by the shores of the Nile. Awesome. So I can't wait to get into this one. I'll just zip this back a bit so you guys can see more. Uh, but again, you've got a little bit of a breakdown of the different type of ancient ones you're going to be seeing here, the cards and things like that. It's better to break the box open and actually see what's in here though. So let's do that right now without any more delay. So we're going to go here. I'm going to cut into this thing. I'm really excited to see what this is going to add in. So let's find out. There we go. Okay. And the wrap is off. Okay, so a little bit easier to see the artwork now. I'm just going to position this in the center so you guys can see this nicely. And there it is, Eldritch Horror Under the Pyramids. So that's looking pretty good. And again, artwork in this game's always been phenomenal, so I always enjoy grabbing another one to add into the collection. Uh, it's a fantastic solo game, as I've already mentioned, and it's even a ton of fun with multiple players as well. Um, so I highly recommend this one. Let's crack the lid off and see what's inside. So classic Fantasy Flight uh, situation here uh, in terms of seeing their catalog. So they're always going to have these in every single one of their games, which is basically just a rundown of all the different products that they have. And they have numerous games, all of which uh, are actually quite good. They have a really great catalog of games. So if you are new to the hobby or the solo gaming hobby, you're going to find things from Fantasy Flight games for sure that you're going to enjoy. And again, it'll come down to theme and mechanics as to whether you actually really want to pick it up. 
Next thing you're gonna see here is the rule book. So these are typically pretty thin for the expansions. They're not thin for the main game, uh, and the rules reference is decently thick, but for the expansions, you can see they're quite thin, um, which is great because it means it adds a whole bunch of stuff, but it, it, it rules-wise, it doesn't overburden you. Uh, so you got the end of the pyramid section, the overview, how to use the expansion. So this is really important information. The icon for all the cards for later on once you break things out. It's got some nice artwork there you can check out. Again, it's going to show you the components that you're going to get, so you can double check to make sure uh, everything is in the box as it should be. So there's just kind of a quick overview of some of the components. You jump into here, it's going to talk a little bit the uh, pre uh, prelude cards, the Egypt, uh, the Egypt sideboard, uh, sideboard setup, location encounters, uh, sideboard rules. Uh, local pass, unique assets, adventures, and so again, very light reading, not very much, that's it. That's literally it, seven pages long, and uh, has some additional rules on the back here, as well as some frequently asked questions to help you out in case you get lost. Uh, but that's not bad, so I've never found, I shouldn't say I've never found, but I, I've always found even the mansions of, uh, or not mansions, but Mountains of Madness expansion that I added into Eldritch Horror already, and have played that the uh, rules to uh, get kind of into the game are very light in terms of uh, adding into Elder Shore. If you understand the base game mechanics already, then the expansions uh, really do a good job of just integrating themselves quite seamlessly with some great new content. So here is the sideboard. It's uh, in, it's wrapped and sealed. So I'm just going to go ahead off screen really quick and cut this because I want to make sure I don't uh, damage anything on the actual board because the boards are quite nice looking. So I've cut into the side. We'll tear this open. See what this sideboard really looks like. Um, let's see here. There it is. So that's pretty cool. I like that. That's really nice. So this is great. This is perfect, actually. You guys can see pretty much the entire thing in the screen right now. So up in the top, I'll just give you guys a little bit closer of a look at the board. So you have the Sahara Desert there. Uh, we also have uh, Alexandria, uh, the Bent Pyramid, Cairo. Uh, Tel El Amirna, if I'm saying that correctly, and the Nile River. The uh, artwork and stuff like this in this game, like I said, is always cool. It gives it that, it really to me, every single time I've seen stuff like this, it always reminds me of like Indiana Jones. Uh, again, theme-wise, it's nothing like that. Uh, but in a way, you guys are investigators going around, but you got the whole Cthulhu um, and stuff like that thing going on. So... This is really, really cool. Uh, again, it looks very similar to what uh, the Mountains of Madness expansion did with its sideboard. So if you're familiar with that one and you're taking a look at this one for the first time, you're going to run into similar mechanics. Uh, but again, the rules are gonna, what you're going to want to check out because there might be new things. Uh, typically, how these sideboards work is there's an, there's an entry point and exit point. So you can see uh, to Space 10 or being in the heart of Africa will get you into this area, essentially. So that's how you go from the main board into the expansion itself. So anyway, we'll take that to the side for now. Close it up. Next up, we're going to take a look at the tokens. So in the expansions, there's not never there's usually not that many. Uh, usually it's only one, uh, but there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, added in in terms of tokens. So you can see here there's some negative tokens now with the skills. I don't actually know if this is the first time that's uh, that's been normal for this because. I think they've always been pluses. I could be wrong. So that could be something that changes in this expansion now, is that uh, you know the game can basically take uh, take skill away from you, um, and that is uh, directly connected to your character. So your character might have three will. Well, if you get one of those particular tokens I just showed you there uh, that relates to will and it's minus one, your will now is lowered. Now that's my just guess without having to or having read anything yet, but uh, that's going to be my prediction on. Kind of like how that works, seems pretty straightforward. So the other really cool thing about this is uh, adding a bunch of new monsters. And of course, uh, the best part, I guess, even better than that is the investigators. So you're gonna get a bunch of new investigators. So I'm trying to do this without popping everything out, but here we go. So we've got the tokens, you're gonna get some more health tokens, sanity tokens, uh, your skill tokens, some gates, of course, six different gates that correspond to each of the six locations we saw from the sideboard. Bunch of clues, and each of those clues on the opposite side, uh, again, relate back to the sideboard locations. Um, and then, of course, you can see here, there's the different areas that we just talked about. You've got uh, some new investigators, so that's pretty cool. I'll flip it over to this side. So here's the eight new investigators that you're going to be able to play as, which is awesome. Like, eight new investigators is quite a bit. And then coming over here, you've got some new uh, enemies. You've got the... Uh, 
the Crawling One, the Fire Vampire, the Sand Dweller, uh, the Spawn, uh, Cultus, Cultus, Cultus. This one's the Spawn of Sabak. It's a giant crocodile. That's really cool. Or at least it looks like a crocodile. Uh, underneath are the elite monsters, so they're much, much more brutal. Uh, so you can see, and actually the the <laughs> the camera's having a hard time focusing, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop them out so you can actually see them, because I think the epic ones are worth showing close up. So here's the first one, and I think this one actually corresponds to one of the um, one of the ancient ones, if I'm not uh, mistaken. That comes in this box. And there is another one that almost slid out of my hand and onto the floor. Pretty cool, pretty scary looking. Uh, the the beast that makes sense for the pyramids. Hunter of the dark, scary and uh, wow. Okay, so that's going to be interesting. So there's some elites and of course cards. You're getting a whole bunch of new cards. There's a whole bunch of cards, uh, quite a bit. Some minis, some regular size ones. So before we get into the cards and showing you those, let's actually open up the. Uh, ancient ones and the investigators. I want to see which ones we've got here. So I was correct about one of the ancient ones being one of those elite monsters, of course. Typically that's the case. Uh, so there's, there he is there, Abhoth. Uh, Abhoth. Uh, that's pretty bleak looking. Um, so again, this character or ancient one's going to have its own thing. It's going to start a certain position on the track. Uh, oh, very cool. So, uh, it's super cool. This is going to be fun, I think. This is going to be a really fun one. Now, this is spoiler territory. I don't want to flip that over. So on the back of each of these ancient ones, basically what happens is you, you play the game and you have this card sitting in front of you uh, and eventually the track's going to run down or <laughs> you don't want it to, but if it does, the track's going to run down to zero. Uh, and when that happens, basically the ancient one awakens and then at that time you flip this card over and follow the instructions and it's going to change the way the ancient one is going to interact with the world. It's also going to change your wind conditions, all that kind of stuff. Well, coming over here to the investigators, we have Hank Sampson, the farmhand. He's got some strong health, not so good on the sanity side of things, some cool abilities there you can read. There's his stats. These are the stats I was talking to about. So you got lore, influence, observation, strength, and will. And of course, those tokens that were colored uh, that were kind of off to the side earlier, which are these guys over here, uh, you know, could take away from those would be my understanding. Harvey Walters, very, very familiar with Harvey Walters. Uh, very good on the sanity side of things. Complete polar opposite to Hank. Uh, a little weaker um, and stuff like that um, with the health and the sanity. A little bit of a flip there. And then all the stats, Hank, um, or Harvey, I should say, very used to from Mansions of Madness. Uh, Joe Diamond as Private Eye. And actually, just so you guys know, Harvey Walters is a professor. Uh, Joe Diamond is a Private Eye. He's a little bit more balanced, can handle a little bit more sanity damage, mainly thematically. He is a Private Eye. He's probably seen a lot of pretty horrific stuff, so he's a little tougher that way. Um, but yeah, there's his stats. He's also very good at observation, which makes sense for a private eye. That's the other thing that's really cool is they are, they do a really good job of thematically tying in the skill, uh, you know, the values that they give you at the beginning to the actual character's background, which I, which I really like. So Mandy here, the researcher, for instance, uh, very good at observation, not much on the strength side of things. Will's okay, but her lore, like her research ability is very high. Influence is very good and observation is extremely good. So, and then of course, she can handle much more on the brain side of things versus the physical side of things. Coming over here, we've got a very even character. So this is the secretary, very evenly balanced and pretty incredibly balanced even in the stats as well. So that'll be cool. And then Monterey Jack, so another kind of heavier hitter guy. He's got the strength to back him up. I've seen him before, a couple of the games. Rex Murphy, ooh, seven and seven, that's pretty good. Uh, he's a reporter, so he's seen quite a few things I'm sure. Sister Mary. Yep, Sister Mary there, and there's her stats. Her will's very high. So there we go. There is all the Ancient Ones investigators that come in this particular package. Uh, so this is not going to make a whole lot of sense to you guys, but um, for those of you that don't know anything about Eldritch Horror, but if you do, then it does make sense. Uh, but essentially, these are cards that are going to be mixed in or created into the Mythos deck. Uh, not all of them, but some of these. And uh, they're going to be added in to basically uh, allow for more variation in the game. So when you originally make your decks for the Ancient One, you have a bunch of yellow. 
you have a bunch of green and you have a bunch of blue and there are three stacks and you're, you're building your ancient one by pulling some of these cards and putting them into kind of tier one, tier two, tier three, or stage one, stage two, stage three kind of a setup. And then of course these right here are actual encounters. So when you land in a particular spot that matches the postcards on the card, so for instance these are going to correlate to whatever they correlate to, they're going to add to that particular uh, deck. So they're color coordinated, which makes them super easy. So this is really good because these are adding all ones to the base game. Because I'm recognizing all these colors, these base game ones. These are generic city wilderness sea type encounters. They're, these ones now would be very specific to this actual expansion. So these these I don't have any of yet for, for the sideboard. So these are going to allow us to have encounters, which is probably why there's going to be a lot more of them. Uh, through that sideboard with all these cards. So that's pretty cool. So you get a whole bunch more of those. But it's nice that they also added in some ones for the core game as well. So that's that. Those ones there. These right here are going to correlate to, uh, you know, so whenever you're going after clues, particular, and it's, and it's in relation to whichever ancient one you're going after, these are what the decks you're going to be pulling from. So again, if you're familiar with the game, that makes sense. Otherwise, that might go over your head. But basically, they're just more encounters to go through for your ancients. Uh, for those two particular ancients, I should say. Um, then you're going to have even more cards that are based on uh, the ancients as well. Let's see if we can pull this deck out. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Okay, so same same deal. If I flip these over, again, it's gonna it's easily distinguishable as to which ancient they refer to. You just keep going. Bam! There's our second ancient there from the box. So lots and lots and lots of cards. You're gonna get things for expeditions. Very cool. So these are certain locations that are gonna show up in the game, and basically you're gonna to have to go through a particular expedition, try to succeed at it. Usually, <laughs> when you go on those types of things, you can get artifacts and really unique, really really powerful unique items as well. So they're really good. Uh, looks like you can do some actual. Ex oh, that's pretty cool. You can do some stuff in uh, different places now. It looks like I don't think I've seen some of these before. So that's kind of cool actually. All right. And then again, some more. Now these are the major cards in the game. When you pick an ancient, you're going to go through here, and you're going to you're going to find all these, and you're going to pick three. And uh, you don't pick them by looking; you pick without looking. And these are going to be your main objectives to try to beat to beat the particular ancient one you've chosen. So again, I don't want to spoil too much on those. So I'm not going to show you the backs. This is total. I've never seen this. I don't know what this is. It could be adventure cards. I could be wrong. Um, these I've seen before in the Mountains of Madness one. I think these are prelude cards. These are ones that you read at the beginning of the game, if I'm not mistaken. And they kind of set up a nice little uh, beginning plot to your journey. Uh, Mythos cards, of course. Uh, so you're going to be pulling... Or sorry, these are Gate. Uh, no, these are Mythos. No. Ah, no, these are not Mythos. These are um, Gate cards. So basically whenever you go through a gate to try and close a gate, you're going to be pulling these. Uh, and then, of course, some more... Some more ancient specific cards. All right, so that's all the standard size cards in the box. You also have standees, which I didn't bother showing you guys yet because they're just standees. And then finally, these are the cool parts. This is where it gives you like your items. This gets down to like what you're gonna likely see, conditions that are gonna affect your character, items that are basically gonna affect or, or enhance the game. So these can be really cool. It can also be really scary because it can be really powerful, but I'll show you the artwork. I'm not gonna focus too much on the actual effects. Um, so this, these types are items. You'll see in the keyword there that tells you what it is. It's an item relic tome. So the artwork on these are always phenomenal. Uh, so you've got magical items, new allies to add into the deck. So these are things that you can potentially purchase or find. Sludge hammer, very cool. I love, love, love. Uh, this game. <laughs> I really, really do. Uh, the old Arkham Horror, the original board game, was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. But this Eldritch Horror thing just completely replaced it for me. I still have all the old Arkham Horrors uh, board game, and I still enjoy it for its own reasons in terms of being in a city and it uh, having a little bit more of a close to... Because scale-wise, between the Arkham Horror board game and Eldritch Horror, Eldritch Horror, Horror is at the world level, whereas the Arkham Horror board game more is focused on the city of Arkham and it being taken over. Uh, but essentially, I guess, if Arkham gets taken over, <coughs> everything else does eventually, too. Um, but I just like the world... The, the I like the... Uh, big picture aspect of Eldritch Horror in terms of knowing that you know the whole world's kind of going down the tubes and you're the one that tried to stop it or try to try to uh, 
save it. So these are all uh, spells. So these are different types of spells. Again, I've never seen some of these. These are brand new, like Focus Learning. Shadow these are going to be all expansion specific cards that uh, come in this one that I've never seen before. Um, this is a unique asset. This unique asset deck, I think, started with Mountains of Madness. Um, so this is going to add to that particular deck, which is basically a really, really, really powerful, usually a really, really powerful asset um, and stuff like that that can really help you out. It's pretty cool. Again, I'm not like you don't get any types of multiple. You get maybe a few of each at times because you might be wondering why is that? Why is there multiple? I don't want to spoil anything, but on the back of them, if you flip it over, see it says right here when you perform a rest action, you may examine. Uh, if you pass, you flip a card. So on the back of it, if you have this in your hand or against your character card, this particular one, and you it, it triggers based on this text down here, and you flip it it's going to resolve differently, say, than the other one here. So that's the reason why there's multiple of certain ones, because they can resolve differently during gameplay. Uh, because otherwise, I think you're just looking at these probably going, why is there so many of the same? Uh, it's because it, the, game want, the game doesn't want you to know what it's going to throw at you. So it gives you, uh, you know, a handful of each, and then that way it, it requires, I mean, unless you've got a super good memory, uh, you're going to, you know, good luck trying to remember all the different effects and when... Uh, when, you know, nasty things are going to come for you. But that's essentially it, guys. That is going to be the complete unboxing of Under the Pyramids. I'm really excited to get this thing sleeved and then added into my Eldritch Horror collection. Hopefully this helped you if you're looking into the game itself or you're also just looking into this expansion. Uh, again, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you saw something that I missed or and want to correct me with something, that's perfectly fine. I may have missed uh, categorized certain cards because uh, I'm, I'm just kind of ripping through here unboxing it. So I do apologize if that happened. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next episode. As always, keep on rolling solo.